Gardening therapy at your fingertips. eating my plants <laughs> or why not because this little guy man it's awesome come mate come have a look come look closer closer oh man this is a little nasturtium but it's called alaska you can see the little bits of white in it and really nice to eat very it's got a like a tarty but beautiful in salads put it in salads people think you're trying to poison them no not really well they will ask what it is but you know if they buy it from the shops in a packet they won't think twice about eating it because it came out of a packet um, but yet if you put it in any of your homemade salads they'll wonder what's going down here um, but guys it's great to have you with us today um, it's another Facebook live it's an 11 o'clock and thank you for joining me um, it's been quite a hectic week I uh, can't believe it's Thursday and like is it Monday, is it Friday, is it Wednesday? These days we actually don't know. But um, congratulations if you have got back to work. Um, congratulations too if you're sitting at work and watching this live stream. Come on, you're a bit defiant. Um, and, uh, and it's great to have you alongside. Uh, we've been preparing for today's Facebook Live and having so much fun. Uh, we've been grabbing pots out the garden bringing them all right here into our little studio setting um, in our garage, actually. And, uh, and we are really looking forward to it. So, guys, let's get started. First of all, well, what is container gardening? Well, we call it container gardening, but in South Africa, we call it pots, you know, and container is really a European word. Um, but container gardening has been going on for eons and eons and eons and in fact that's how plants back in the days when there were ships just with sails no engines no outboard motors that's how plants got around the world they got around the world through putting them in a barrel in a container in a pot in something and growing it and putting it on the ship and taking it to another land and and that's how it really all started um but now there are different reasons why we have it. We have it because it's beautiful. We have it because it, no matter how big or smaller spaces, we can still have them in our garden. No matter if we're in balcony gardening, if we live in a little flat, if we've got a 10 hectare garden, we can still have them right by our side. And that just, for me, is, is so amazing. And you know, when they're looking good, Man, when they're looking good, you bring them way up front. I mean, like this one. Check this baby out here. When they're looking good, you bring it out and you show it off to everybody where you can enjoy it. And then when it starts going off a bit, you know, not looking so lacquer, like it's needing a COVID haircut, then you can move it away and you can replace things. And, and isn't that part of the joy? It's, it's a gardening style that changes with your moods, with the trends, with what you're feeling like and what you're into. Um, and that ticks all the boxes for me. It, it really does. And it, and it doesn't matter how big or small. I mean, take a look at this over here. So whether you're going to garden in this, <laughs> this new, 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 new little pot. I mean, look, 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 look there, look there. Whether you're going to garden in this, this is container gardening. Yep, it is. Because it's one little new, new plant that you can put in here and most importantly it's got a drainage hole guys the biggest 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 mistake we make is that we drown our plants um, and you know um, if you've been following us and watching our programs on tv and getting the gardener magazine and detainee you'll know that a firm favorite of ours is terracotta pots i mean we just love them oh hello mr rollo wait i want to show you our boy Come here, my boy. Come here. Come here. Bring your stick. Bring your stick. So it, I introduced Rolo to you a few weeks ago. Rolo has settled into the family really, really well. <laughs> oh, thank you, my boy. He loves gardening. He loves sticks. He loves plastic pots, don't you? 
Um, and yeah, he's he's the cutest little child, but a monster, a monster. We've had to put a little bell on him because um, he disappears into the garden and we have no idea where he's gone. Um, but this is young Rolo and uh, we are trying to learn our name. Um, give mom a kiss. Give me a kiss. Rolo, kiss. Oh, thank you, my boy. Okay, love you. There we go. Go, take your stick. Um, and he's just an absolute treat. He, he picks up all the plant labels, the tags, and he runs off with them. We end up with sticks in our bed because he loves sticks, so they come to bed too. So does the plastic pot, and lo and behold, you can't try and swap it out for another plastic pot because he knows that's his plastic pot. But anyway, let's get back to the containers. I was talking about terracotta. We love terracotta because it works so well. Um, terracotta is obviously a natural product. Um, it, it's um, removed from the, from the earth as a clay, um, and then it's molded into these beautiful pots. The thing is, they never go out of fashion. They never. Whether blue's in this year or it's purple, lo and behold, um, it, it doesn't matter. Because with the terracotta pot, it stays. It's there for life. I've got terracotta pots that were from my mom and dad. Um, they are still with me, and I still use those and recycle them and change them up, and they just are there forever. Um, another thing that we love doing is come back to this here, Mace. Look at this here, this enamel bowl. You can see there's the price still on it. 55 rand we paid for this. Um, these enamel bowls are gorgeous. Um, and you know you can pick them up at these secondhand little shops on the side of the road when you're driving around. Um, anything that you can plant something in that's got a hole is container gardening. So whether it's a wheelbarrow that's got holes in it, whether it's an old gum boot, whether it's a tin, and in fact tins, that's how they used to grow plants back in the years, back, back, back in the days, before there was fancy plastic. Anything that you can put a plant into that can hold some soil is container gardening. So if you don't have enough pots around, you're missing out, you've got to get to them because pfft, just it, it's way, way gorgeous. And today I'm going to introduce you to some sexy beauties behind me here um, that we've got some great combinations and also go through the do's and don'ts. Okay, so let's see who's, who's saying hello to us. Once again, I can't turn this machine on, but hold on, let's just see if I can on my own. Um, it's very fancy. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, oh, lots of love from the cold Mayaton. Hello, Johan Panda Dupree. Yeah, uh, Mayaton is freezing, guys. I mean, there must be frost. Um, take pictures and send them to us, please. Um, Shazzy, um, hello. Good to see you here. Yolandi, um, good to see you. Uh, well done, and thank you for joining us. Rose, a morning from PE. Hello, Rose. Uh, Sandy Smith, good to have you on board with us. Um, Josic, hello, good morning. <laughs> uh, yeah, Rolla is adorable, isn't he? He's naughty, naughty little, but he's just too adorable. <laughs> um, uh, Renata Fisser, um, hello. I wonder if you're a relative. Um, maybe you are, hey? Uh, love the furry kid. Yes, yes, we all do. Um, who else have we got saying hello to us? Um, Alta. Uh, good morning, Nadine de Villiers, hello, hello, Mwah. Um, good to see you here, uh, Michelle, um, and uh, we've got Alta as well, and we've also got, um, I want to find them, I saw them pop up a bit earlier, so I'm just going to go to page one here, if I can, mm, mm, hold on, um, I want to say hello to Kiki. Kiki, hello, Kiki is um, Shan and Ant's um, daughter. Um, Kiki, love to you. Um, I hope you're going to help dad in the garden after watching this. Go potty, yeah, make him, drive him mental because that's what kids are meant to do. And uh, I'm sure there were many parents out there who were, who just had a little, um, a little meltdown when they heard that schools weren't going back because like we do love the teachers now we really really love them we promise we're not going <laughs> to have those meetings with them um, <laughs> um but uh, yeah guys um back to school is next week um so kicks lots of love lots of love um llewellyn pots are my thing now good job good job um uh, marianne um uh, nice to have you on board thank you so much and sandy smith 
I'm in North Queensland. Oh, my word. North Queensland. Hey, how do you do? <laughs> oh, my word. Um, we've got Wendy. Good morning, Wens. Um, a favorite, always back on our program. Um, and we've got Diane from Benoni. Um, and who else? Uh, we've got Marlene from Bothers Hill up the road. Um, uh, LaRusha, kids and I are enjoying watching the program. Um, Terrania, I imagine that's, your, um, that's one of your kids, um, does mini container gardening too. Yes, and you know fairy gardens have become a whole big thing. I mean, you can, you can make a whole fairy land just in one little pot and you can get the little guys that go with it and the elves and whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, so, you know, there's something for everyone, like I said. Um, okay, so uh, let's have a look here. Let's, let's pop into here to see if there are any questions. Um, uh, from Linda in Bethlehem. Oosh, now that's cold. Now that is cold. Um, let's have a look. Let's put Linda up on the screen. Um, Linda from Bethlehem, is it a good time to repot succulents and cacti? Um, Linda, you can do it any time. Uh, these guys are tough. I mean, look at them. They're incredibly tough. Um, I, I'm going to go through this quickly here whilst we're talking about succulents so that we can cover kind of a few of those, um, those pointers. So in here is a beautiful echeveria. Some people say echeveria, some say echeveria. But man, look at it. Isn't it gorgeous? I love this ruffle. I just love the ruffle. Look at that. It's like waves. It's almost like when you go, you know, put goggles on and you go under the sea. Um, it, it looks, they look like sea urchins. They, they, they look like the coral. Um, they really can transport you. And the thing I love about succulents, they're really so easy. Um, anybody can plant them. Okay, this one over here, I wouldn't recommend children planting them. Look at that. It's all the, also called a mother-in-law's cushion. <laughs> you understand why um but this guy if you've got to transplant this one of the easiest ways to use a good tip is to just take some bra tongs take some bra tongs grab it with the bra tongs and pull it up lift it up and you can pop it back into the pot and therefore you're not going to get poked by anything um and really it does help a whole lot we've got another beautiful echeveria over here and look at that symmetry isn't it? Oh, Rolo, 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 my boy. Um, and we've got this beautiful boy over here. Now, I want to talk to you very quickly about repotting. And, um, and just a couple of tips there based on that question. So, a, a perfect mixture. If you can get your hands on a, a proper succulent mix um, from your local garden centre, then 100%. Uh, you can do that. But um, a lot of garden centers around South Africa, purely because of transport, actually can't get that succulent mix. So then you make your own. Okay. And this stuff on top here is what you use. This is pool filter sand. Okay. You can see it. Pool filter sand. Stuff that you put in your swimming pool, those bags. We use a mixture of 50% pool filter sand with 50% potting soil. Nice and easy. Half and half. Mix that together. It's one of your best best potting soils before succulents because it's nice and sharp, it's gritty, it's got good drainage. So transplanting, 100%, do it now, do it any time, and you'll be safe. Once you've transplanted, remember, a very good watering, and give it a bit of a plant food to give it a bit of a boost, okay? All right, let's see what else we've got here. Oh, we've got Eric from Western Australia. He, he's watched he's watched the show for years now. Oh, mwah, bless you. Hells, bells. Can I come to Australia? Can I come and do some gardening talks after COVID? Okay. Um, uh, Forney, when you stand a container in liquid fertilizer, let's just get this one, let's get this up on the screen because um, this looks like a very interesting question. When you stand a container in liquid fertilizer, how long do you leave it absorbing the liquid? Now, Forney, you clearly know one or two things about gardening because you're doing it the right way. So, let me just explain very, very quickly. If you are going to be watering things like an orchid um, and plants that you have in these things, so, so plants that you have in, in these things which we call um, pot covers. Now you'll notice the first thing, the pot cover does not have a hole, all right? Big problem because this is generally how people, well, not our people, how plants die, all right, is because of these things. Exhibit A. 
All right. And then we've got a plant. We've bought a beautiful plant. Um, let's find one. It's not quite going to work, but you'll get the idea. You buy a beautiful plant and then you pop it inside here. All right. And then you water it and you water it and you water it. No, 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 no. Okay. Number one, big mistake. When you're watering plants that are in pot covers, take the plant out, please. And especially for indoor plants, I like doing it this way because it works. So what do you do? You take uh, even your sink, your bath, okay, or a nice big tub, all right? Or use something like this, a tub trug. Oh, and I'm going to talk about this just now, but oh, there's my Gucci handbag. Fabulous. I love it. So you take something like a trug, put your water in, mix your liquid fertilizer in, and then you put the plant inside. So it's sitting in the water. Go away, go shopping, go and do whatever, take a walk on the beach. Are you allowed? I'm not too sure. Don't hold me to it. But you know what I'm saying? Leave it for about 20 minutes to half an hour. The water will then get absorbed into the plant. All right. Come back after you've had your tea, had your G&T. Um, take it out, give it a shake, get rid of the excess water, and then you put it back into your pot cover. All right, does that make sense? Okay, right, good, because that's the way you do it. Um, I hope that's answered your question. Tracy Lee, I'm renting, so for me it's pots. Very, very, very good. This week I did one. Oh, you did the one with the candle in the middle. Ah, oh, Tracy, brilliant. Um, remember, and if you want to know what, what I'm talking about, go and have a look at my YouTube channel because you will see um, that we've got loads and loads of different gardening ideas. You can also go to the Builders YouTube channel because we've also got lots of cool gardening tricks, tips, and more advice um, on that channel as well. Do strawberries and chilies work in pots? Now, Marie, um, let's get you up. Really interesting um, profile pic there. Um, now, Marie, what is that? Is that a plant? I can't see. Yeah, I need better glasses. Okay. Now, Marie, yes, they can. Strawberries love being in pots. The one thing you've just got to be careful of is that they don't dry out. Okay, strawberries, especially when they're in flower, they're setting bud, and they're starting with the small fruit, they're thirsty. They're thirsty, thirsty, thirsty. I mean, they've got to make big, beautiful strawberries for you. So make sure that they stay well watered. What I also like about strawberries in pots is that the fruit hangs over the edge. So the fruit is not going to get damaged. You know, when they're on the ground and you don't put down straw or hay or weed guard, they can get like, dirty, all right? And there's nothing, there's nothing romantic about biting into a strawberry with a piece of soil. Okay, nothing, nothing. So, yes, they do well. Chilies love pots. And one thing with chili, chilies, the more stressed out you make them, you know, and which is one good thing with container gardening. So when you stress them out, they're going to give you more flowers, all right? Ah, yes. More flowers mean more fruit. And right now, your chili plants should be in abundance of chilies because it's, it's late into the season. It's, this is going to be their last fruit until next season, all right? So if you've got an abundance, pick them, please. Pick them, pickle them, um, do whatever. Um, make a maza veru. Um, make a chili jam. But you must pick them now because... Once this, this crop is over, there ain't no more till next season. Okay. <clears throat> Mini, let's see. What is Mini's question? Mini, um, let's put you up there. Mini, how would, oh, uh, not how would, I would like to grow a herb vegetable garden in pots. Is this easy to do? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, Mace, I'm going to take them across there because I want to show you um, how easy it is to grow um, okay, come with me. We're gonna go on a little, on a little walk here. Um, let's see, are we up and running? Yes, there we are. Come with me here. I want to show you this. Look at this here. So, uh, let's move this plant out the way. Look at that. We've got it in one of these enamel um, containers here. What have we mixed? I'm gonna get to your basic potting soil mix for containers in a few minutes. But this is an edible, an edible mix. So we've got little dianthus in here. Dianthus, completely edible. They're also known as pinks. Beautiful plant. Tough, tough as nails. When it starts going over, all that you do... Oh, it's not working. Oh, I'm not talking to anybody. Oh, hell's bells. Mace, come in here then. It's not working. Is it working now, Mace? Warwick? 
No? no? Right. Come with me, Mason. Come. Mason, Mason is very good with this camera thing. He can jump all over. Okay, have a look here. Um, for those of you who missed it, here's the container. All right? It's a beautiful enamel container. In it, we've got dianthus. These are pinks. They also, um, they, they're really, really tough. And um, when they finish flowering, you give them a light pruning halfway down. You see there? And then they come up again and they go on and on and on. We've got some little lettuce in here. We've got some pak choy. Pak choy, beautiful. One of the best, best greens. And you know, you can use it um, as an alternative to spinach. Um, it grows so easily, so quickly. And let me tell you, these bits here, the flowers, let's break this off here. The flowers are delicious. These flowers are fantastic. You can eat the flowers as well, all right? They're really yummy, really, really yummy, nice and juicy. Um, and we like to leave some flowering. So we pick, 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 and then we leave some of the puck joy to flower because after the flower, of course, come seeds. You see, there's the seed pod, okay? Make sure that the soil around it, if it's in a container, of course, they're going to fall into the container. Make sure that it's, it's kept moist because then these seeds will simply just germinate and you'll get the next generation of your puck joy coming through. We love it. It's also really nice just in salads, um, but high in vitamin C, good, um, really, really good. Also got, um, mm, mm, it's nice, it's nice. Okay, in here, I've also got a portulacaria. Now, we know this is the food for elephants. Um, portulacaria, everybody's been going mad about it. Um, like, this is the, the saviour plant of the universe. Um, yeah, it's kind of like a plant hero, hey? Um, portulacaria uh, comes from the Eastern Cape. It grows where there is hardly anything. Um, this high in fiber, more vitamin C than an orange, and um, great with other vitamins as well, um, and good as a, um, what's that word called? Like an immune booster. Yeah, very, very good. This, you can make a beautiful breedy with it. Uh, you can also pickle it. You can add it raw to your salads, and it's really yummy. I remember as a kid, um, Mace, yeah, that's cool. I remember as a kid going to, my, um, my aunt's house, she had a big bush climbing up the stairs, and we would like, we would grab right, handfuls of this stuff. Okay, I'm just checking Mason's cord here that he doesn't get tripped up in it. Um, but really nice. Mm. Oh, mm. it's got a tartness, eh? It really has got a tartness, but still delicious. It's like, mm, it's like a mild sour worm, if you get mild sour worms, but not that bad. But I love sour worms, so... Um, but anyway, so yes, container gardening, absolutely. The biggest thing you've got to watch out for with veggies is because veggies suck water, all right? Um, they really are thirsty. And if you don't keep them well watered during their growth time when they're trying to either produce fruit, like I said with the strawberries, you're going to have some like uh, some not so, not so lack of things. Okay, so... What do you need to do? You need to get your soil mixture right. Okay, now listen up because I'm going to be giving you the soil mixture. And guys, this is it. If you're worried about anything and you haven't got it right and you've just failed in some places, then this is it. Okay, so what you need is potting soil. This is potting soil. All right, take a look here. It's out of a bag. All right. From your local garden center it's not potting soil from the plant that died 20 years ago all right that was lying in its pot dead and then you've you've scraped up the soil no 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 because that can have diseases and all sorts of rubbish in it no you're using fresh potting soil all right make life easier and put it in a trug all right I've seen so many people fighting with the big bag of potting soil. Hold on, I've got it, I've got it, 20 kgs. And they're trying to put it into a little pot this big. And what happens? <gasps> Boom! <laughs> the soil goes all over. It falls on the plant. It breaks the flower off, the only flower that you had on the plant. And you're like, oh, cut, slit my wrists. All right, so put it in a trug. Work on a surface so that you're not bending down and breaking your back. So here's your potting soil. Now in this, in this um, trug, I've got about five liters, like a bucket, a bucket of potting soil. All right, the next thing you wanna do is this. Now, this is one of the secrets, okay? 
this is one of the secrets. It's called palm peat. Okay, palm peat, guys, if you watch my program, if you follow me, you know I believe in this stuff as much as I believe in having Tabasco sauce with eggs is the only way to eat eggs, it's this. All right, so what is this? It's a block, you can use it. Yup, watch out there, yeah, I can use it as a very good, um, uh, what is the word called? Traditional weapon, that's it. A very good traditional weapon. I always have three, four, five of these in my gardening arsenal. <laughs> in my gardening arsenal, because it works. All right, so what do you do? You take one of these. This is the outside of a coconut that's been shaved, all right? Imagine the little coconut being shaved, and then it's put in, um, it's squashed together, all right? So it's nice and fine. It's squashed together, formed into this block, cost you about 35, 40 rand, round about there. You put it into a container like this, all right? You put the block in, and you add five liters of water, and you go away. When you come back, it has swollen. It is expanded to form this. Look at it now. The water has been sucked up into here. You can see I said it's nice and fine. All right. And it's a lightweight. It really is lightweight. But most importantly, where's all the water gone? The water's gone here. See that? All right. So we were talking about water being the biggest issue and availability of water. Well, when you've got this mixed with your potting soil, you don't need to worry about that. So what's the volume? What are the ratios? So you're going to use one part of this, your palm peat, to four parts of potting soil. Got it. Okay. Right. So then what we do is, as I said, I've got one five litre bucket in there. All we're going to add now is about a quarter of a bucket because then we've got one part four pots, all right? So that'll be a couple of handfuls. There's no real science in this. Um, pop it in and then you give it a good mix. Once you have done that and mixed it in, your potting soil is nearly good to go, but not quite because there are one or two more things that I add to pimp it. And this is important, okay? So the next thing I'm gonna add is this. All right, take a look here. This is not rabbit food. Boys and girls, no, 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 no. This is Atlantic Bio Ocean, all right? Atlantic Bio Ocean, it is an organic, pelletalized chicken litter mixed with seaweed. Hi, ball. With that mouthful, it's got to be good. Of course it's good. I'll take a handful of that, all right? That's per five liters. So the bigger you go, the more you add. A handful, I add it in, all right? Add it in, and then I mix. So in my mixture... I've got this food. So as the roots go down, the plants can get the food. Makes sense? Of course it does. All right, last thing I want to show you that we add in is some of this. All right, where is this baby of mine? Ah, okay. Now, guys, whew, this is such a party trick. All right, it's this stuff here. Now, take a closer look here. This is called hydro cash. Okay, hydro cash, what is it? It's basically a water retaining gel. All right, and it is pimped with carbon. So have a look at that, very dark, very messy. Okay, look at that, see what my finger looks like now? I mean, it, this is carbon. Carbon is really important for your soil because what does it do? It releases available nutrients. Um, it helps uh, moisture retaining. Uh, it helps the general soil, your soil structure. It works like a charm. So in a mixture of this, I would add in five grams. Okay, but I'm going to show you how it works. So I just mix this in. All right, if you really want to pimp it, if you really, really want to pimp it, you take it one step further and you add in some Humigrow, which is basically like, what is this? This is like mm, compost on steroids. See these little granules here? Like magic stuff. You only need to add five grams, five grams into a container this big. It's hardly anything. Take a teaspoon, pop it in. Also, amazing properties, works beautifully for releasing nutrients, bringing your soil build up, um, and just working well. Okay, so, but okay, that's your mixture. Did you get that? If you didn't get it, we'll help you again on the questions a bit later. But I'm going to put this away because I want to show you what this stuff does. Okay, so here I've got a glass of water. I'll actually have a sip. Mm. Right. 
So, why is HydroCache so important? And why should you be using it? And it's simply because of this. Look what happens. So I'm going to add five grams. Okay. When you're watching there, mate, get a close-up of this. And I'm going to mix it. I'm going to mix it. So you see all the carbon. The carbon is the black. Okay. I'm going to mix it, mix it, mix it. And as I'm mixing, I can feel something happening. Mmm. Okay. Feel something happening. Mix it up. And what's happening is these little gel, these little, um, the, the, the little gel crystals that are in here are starting to be activated. Now, I imagine you've had this mixed in your potting soil, okay? Um, and when you add water, so this would be like you're watering it now. Look what's happening. Oh, my word. It's starting to look like jelly. Where's the water going? Well, it's being sucked up, okay? So this product is used by the timber industry, hugely. You know when they plant a little sapling, um, say a little pine sapling tree, all they do is they put a bit of this, the mixed stuff like this, a blob of that in the bottom of the hole, put the little seedling in, fill it up, and that's it. Give it a little bit of water, and that plant gets no water ever again because the water that the plant needs, oh my gosh, look at this, boom, that is where the water has gone. So the water sits in the hydro cache here, and the roots, imagine that, all mixing in there in your soil, and when the plant needs the water, it extracts it, it takes it out. There you go, so that's why you need it. Many of you, many of you have had planted hanging baskets, thanks Mace, many of you have planted hanging baskets, and you're like, they die, they die, I mean look, where's the water? She's gone, ha <laughs> ha, party trick, she put on my head. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, no, it's not going to drop. See, the water's all gone. Okay, so add hydro cash. Let's get back to hanging baskets. Many of us have baskets like this. Okay, can you come with me, Mace, so or should I switch to my phone? Um, many of you have beautiful baskets like this, which is also a type of container gardening. Gardening. This is a beautiful petunia. Um, it's one of the wave series. Look at that, cascading, awesome. But one of the biggest things with these is watering because they dry out so quickly. So when you're planting your hanging basket, you use that mixture, you use that hydro cash, all right, because then it's not going to dry out. And that you need to use in veggie gardening, really important. Okay, let's go back to it, Mace. There we go. All right, um, let's see what is cooking on some any other questions. Um, Marion, I've got a granadilla. Let's just call you up here. Send. Let's see. Marion, I have a granadilla vine that's self-seeded in a pot. Wow, it's an established vine now. Can I replace the soil in the pot or should I just leave it? Okay, okay, Marion, leave it. Because a granadilla vine has a really fibrous root system and they're greedy feeders. Granadillas are greedy feeders. Um, if you want that, that vine to produce beautiful granadillas, then you've got to feed it. Feed it with um, something like this. Bioorganic. Um, let me show you. I'll switch to the phone and then I can show you what's cooking here. Feed it with some of this. Um, let's just get you going here. Feed it with this. Here's bioorganic, all purpose. It's a good organic fertilizer. It works like a charm. Do this every four to six weeks. The same with this 315 organic. Exactly the same. Use these products, guys, because they are going to help veggie gardening, any gardening in containers. All right. Um, really, really important. Um, what I would also suggest is that you can maybe take a bit of this hydro cash. All right. That's the stuff that I used here. Take a stick and make a hole in the pot. Okay. So you pop the stick in, jiggle it around a little bit, and you pour some of the dry granules into the hole. Okay. Pour some of the dry granules into the hole, and then as you're watering, so they begin to then expand, okay? So they'll then expand and hold the water so that the plant has enough water. Okay, I'm still on here. Warwick, are you okay with this? Um, the phone seems to be doing its own thing. Right, we'll switch you off then. All right, so that is your don't, don't transplant your granadilla. I don't think you're going to get it right. Um, Michelle, um, 
Uh, let's see what Michelle has to say. Any ideas for hanging succulents on a patio that looks really pretty? What types of plants work for a windy patio? Uh, creative ideas instead of containers. Well, you, like I said, you can use anything. Um, you could take a basket, you know. <coughs> Excuse me. You could take one of those uh, baskets like that you put towels in and stuff like for your bathroom. You can take one of those. You could line it with some black plastic and you could plant in there so the outside looks pretty. You could do that. Succulents, yes, look out for something called Ripsalis. Ripsalis is a beautiful plant. They, they are so in vogue at the moment. They're all over garden centers. They're spiky and they come with golden foliage. You get short ones. You get ones that just cascade over like this. Some that grow meters long. So you can have it high up and it just... Oh, it just cascades down. It's beautiful. I would definitely use that. They can grow in the sun. They can grow in semi-shade. So it's really good as a good combo plant on a patio even as well. But look out for Ripsalis. They're funky, funky, funky. They're absolutely beautiful. Um, what was the other question? What plants will work for a windy patio? Okay, windy patio, come with me. Right over here. Um, right, Mace, you're not going to trip over anything. I want to show you the sexiest plant alive. Um, guys, I saw this plant um, about three years ago at the Chelsea Flower Show. I took pictures of this thing till, like, I think, I don't know how many hundreds of pictures I took because I was just so, so taken with it. Um, this is called Senecio Angel Wings. And let me tell you, I wish you could touch it because it is just beautiful it's furry it's soft it's like a lamb's ear it is so amazing um i love love this plant look at it now this plant actually comes from coastal regions originally okay so coastal regions but it can take quite a bit of frost it will grow on the coast right up to the mountains it can grow in wind full sun beautiful grow this plant look it's beautiful Look, and it's all once when you start touching this thing, you like, you know, it's like such a new new. It's beautiful, guys. Um, and look how beautiful it works here with this. Now, this plant over here is called Diamond Frost. Sometimes it's also known as Kilimanjaro. Um, but look out for it. This is a euphorbia. Okay, so what's a euphorbia? A euphorbia is basically a poinsettia. All right, yeah, those red things that you have at Christmas time on your table that you end up killing. This is its same family. It's a cousin, but a prettier cousin. I mean, look at it. You <laughs> look at it. It is spectacular. This plant can grow right on the coast, can take quite a bit of wind. It's tough. It will have a flower on this plant every day of the year. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. This is a beautiful option. And with it, I've got one of the toughest little bedding plants that anyone ever created, which is that big man upstairs, and it's called Chrysanthemum pallidocum. Really tough, thick leaves. You can see with thick leaves means that it's a tough plant. They're almost quite waxy. They've got almost a waxy coating on them. All right, And such a giving plant. Look at all the little buds. It just flowers and flowers and flowers. It'll go on for about four months in this pot when it's over, so this will remain permanent. This will remain for three, four years in this pot. Um, when these have passed their sell-by date, you know, because they grow, they live, they die, normal thing, it's not a plastic plant, you'll pull it out and you can replace it with something else. But this as an option for a gorgeous container combo, you just want, you know when you see a cute child, you want to squeeze it? That's what I want to do, I want to squeeze this, because it's so gorgeous. Okay, come back to me. Right, Mace, let's get on with this. Okay, how often should I water? Debbie is asking, oh, here comes the question. How often should I water my basil and pots? Debbie, the plant will tell you. It will tell you when it's thirsty. And basil, in fact, I've got some basil here. Um, I'm going to show you some basil here. Uh, <coughs> excuse me a second. I want to show you um, some basil. Here are different types of basil. All right. So what I'm showing you here is what I'm showing you here is a perennial basil. All right. Um, this is a, one of the sacred basil. It's perennial basil. Um, Warwick, am I on? Yes. Right. Um, 
this is one of the perennial basils. It's not the glossy green basil that you find normally in packets from shops, you know, that people mostly buy. And, and in my opinion, this one is, prob is way more spectacular. I mean, look at those flowers. Look at that. Isn't it beautiful? So not only do you use it for cooking like normally, but you'd also, it just looks so beautiful. And it has masses, masses of these pink flowers um, all around it. Um, so when the basil is going to tell you when it's thirsty is when these leaves start drooping. These leaves will start drooping and it'll tell you I am thirsty. Um, another good way to see if your plant needs water is this test. Okay, very easily. Take your finger, pop it into the soil. Take your finger out. You see, there is stuff on my finger. All right, there's stuff on my finger. If there is stuff on my finger, it means that there is still moisture in the soil. If I put, put, put my finger into the soil and it comes out and it's dry, there's nothing attached to my finger, well then it's dry and it needs watering. Okay, so it's really simple, guys. We, we've just got to use our common sense, our common knowledge, but as a general rule of thumb, you're going to be watering your containers either twice a week or three times a week. Okay, that's the go. Okay, right. Um... Uh, Diane, let's see what Diane has. Um, Diane, I've got an ornamental orange tree that I've had in a container for many years, growing on a sheltered north-facing patio. Um, uh, it has recently got Australian mealybug. Mm, I've sprayed it, um, but no. Uh, I've sprayed it, but not helping. Uh, would repotting help? Okay, so, so Diane, what's probably happening... Um, is that the pot, the plant has been in the pot too long, all right. Um, and like all things, we outgrow them, even clothes, especially during lockdown. Okay, so plants outgrow the size of the container. And every now and then, you've got to take them out the container, tease away all that old soil, okay, tease it away, get rid of that old soil, mix up a new pimped potting soil mixture and put it into a bigger container, especially if it's something as important as an orange tree, a permanent tree, a tree, a shrub that you want there, or like a cycad, um, any fruit tree that you want to go on for a long, long time. So yes, take it out, get your potting soil mix, remember to put your drainage holes in the bottom, remember to put your drainage pebbles in the bottom, all right? And why do we do drainage pebbles? I'm just going to show you very quickly. Where's my pot? All right. So we use pebbles in the bottom of the pot because if I have to just add potting soil straight into this, my potting soil mix, which is here, I'm going to show you very quickly. Just hang five there, Mace. If I add, if I add potting soil straight into here, did you see what happened? All right. Do you see? The soil comes out. All right, and then whenever you pick your pot up to move it somewhere, you just get this little Hansel and Gretel trail of potting soil. Most annoying, really annoying. So what do we do? We get some gravel, cheap gravel, all right, and put that in the bottom of the pot, all right. Take a look. Now I can add the potting soil, and none of the soil is going to fall out, all right. The gravel also helps for filtration of the water. It makes sure that the pot is well drained, which is really important because remember, right in the beginning I said, that's why they die. Okay, so definitely, please plant, replant it, transplant that, get that plant, um, get it into a bigger pot. And in terms of, um, of the mealybug, mealybug is a pest. It's a awful, awful terrible if I had any other adjectives that I was allowed to use on Facebook Live, I would, but it's not. Um, I'm not allowed to. Well, anyway, 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 anyway. So with, um, with mealybug, you've got to use more than one application. You've got to whack it. So you've got to whack it once, twice, three times in a week apart. You really got to get to it. So treat it again, and I promise you will get rid of it. But it is quite stubborn, so uh, don't give up. Just don't give up. You will get rid of it. Um, all right, all right, all right. Oh, I've got a lemon tree. Oh, lemon tree questions. This is from Elaine. Hello, Elaine. Um, I've got a lemon tree in a pot that is really not doing well. Did you hear the answer previously? 
Um, I fed it and watered it. All the right goodies, but I don't know what the problem is. No fruit and it's lost all its leaves. Oh, Hebel, no, not a good sign. Not a good sign. It's like when all our hair falls out, not a good sign. Um, so my worry is, my worry is two things. Is the plant in full sun? Number one, that plant needs full sun. Lemon trees need lots of sun. Okay, so is it in full sun? Is the pot big enough? Okay, so for a lemon tree, guys, and, and work with me here, for a lemon tree, minimum size is at least 50, all right, 50, 60 centimeters by at least a foot in depth. Minimum size, okay, for a lemon tree. Um, and that's for any fruit tree. And I don't know what you're feeding it with, but try um, Atlantic Bioorganic or use the Organic 315, feed it, and remember your watering is twice a week for fruit trees, not three times, twice a week for fruit trees, and it should come right. But please, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't make sense. Yeah, maybe you can send us a picture and, um, and we can even answer it and, and more specifically because that lemon tree sounds like it's like it's an ICU. It sounds like it's got an oxygen mask on and you know what happens after that. Huh? Um, all right. Uh, just a question. Adele's got a question. Let's go here. Adele, um, just a question regarding planting proteas in pots and pun cushions. I used Feinbos mix and mulching on top with Roybo stockies. Tree! Rockstar, you've done everything right. Yes, remember, proteas and pincushions don't like, they don't like any phosphates. No phosphates. So when you're planting, you use no bone meal, you use no super phosphate, they really don't like it. And feeding, use an organic plant food, please. They're not, they're not partial to chemical fertilizers. Okay, so use that, but it sounds like you've done everything right. Well done, and you've mulched it. Good on you, good on you. Oh, Essie says, Essie, hello, why do my roses that are on pots get powdery mildew? This is a loaded question, Essie. I think you set me up, because um, for those of you who know me, uh, roses and I, give me a bunch rather, but um, roses are, are, are quite challenging, especially where we live here in the mist belt, um, they get lots of powdery mildew because there's so much moisture in the air. Um, every hoho in the district comes to hang out here, all right, and they have a party on the roses. Um, so they are hard work. In the drier areas of South Africa, Bloemfontein, um, hot, dry, high felt, oh, they're beautiful. They're spectacular, all right. So powdery mildew generally comes along either because there's too much moisture, it's humid, um, or the other reason is the plant is stressed. It's like us, okay, when, we, when our immune systems are down, we've been working too hard, we're stressed, we're fighting with somebody, whatever, whatever, our immune systems are low, there's a flu bug that's coming around, Pff, you're going to get it, all right. You are going to get it. It's the same with plants. When the immune system is lowered, a hoho will go straight to it. So, I'm going to suggest the following. All right, all right, all right. I'm going to suggest the following. Now, for powdery mildew, I want you to use this as a preventative. Okay, it's called Disease Pro. Now, the brilliant thing, the brilliant thing about Disease Pro is that it is a biofungicide. Okay, biofungicide. Woohoo! big word. Bottom line, what? 15 minutes. I've only got 15 minutes left. What's going on here? Okay, this is a biofungicide. So um, have a look here. Comes in a sachet. One sachet, pop it into one liter of water. There it is. That's what it looks like. In here are all the good bugs. You mix it into water. You spray it onto your plant. Now, you can use this on edibles. You can use this on your pumpkins, on your tomatoes. They get powdery mildew. What else gets powdery mildew? Cucumbers. Plant a cucumber. Poof, powdery mildew is there. What is powdery mildew? It's that white stuff. You see it on tomatoes, pumpkins, all cucurbit family. You find it full up. And, of course, roses. Okay, so what are we doing? You mix this into water. You do a light spraying on top of it. You are now bringing this alive. What happens is this fungus starts growing on the leaves. Normally, you don't see it. We can't see it. Okay, but it starts growing. As soon as powdery mildew lands... On here, those spores, because that's how powdery mildew um, moves along via the spores in the air, and then it lands. Guess what? 
the stuff. Eats powdery mildew. Eats it up, okay? So if you are preventative spray, okay, preventative, so you're using this on your roses, and a powdery mildew happens to arrive there, goof, it's gone. It's like protective armor. And that's what I like about it. So that's what we use. We use this on the roses and it works like a charm. The other good thing is that on edible plants, and I'm saving this, I'm putting it back. On edible plants, you can spray it and you can spray and eat, all right, the same day. You don't need to wait for 10 days. You don't need to wait for two weeks. You don't need to wait for six months. You can literally take it and, see, it's so safe. You can eat it. It's like molasses. Okay, all right, does that answer your question? Also, with roses, yes, feed them, please. Feed, feed, feed. Rosemary, let's see what's up here. Rosemary's question is, I have three hyacinth bulbs in container. Good. They've started to shoot. How often do I water them now? Rosemary, as a general rule, and I'm going to say this as a general rule, you want to water them in a good watering once a week. That is it. A good deep watering once a week. Water till the water comes out the bottom of the container and that should be more than enough for your bulb. Okay, got it. Nice and simple. All right. Um, what, Audrey? Audrey, you've been with me for like six weeks. Audrey is leaving me. She says, hi, I'm just saying hi. I have to watch later since the kids are back at school. I would love to watch lives um, because during lockdown, I converted my whole garden into container garden. Good on you. Um, Audrey has been like one of our most uh, amazing supporters and she's been on the Facebook Lives every, every, every single week. I'm sad. I'm sad. But anyway, watch later. Okay. Um, all right. Let's have a look. Uh, Pam has an... Oh, what's happening here, Pam? Pam has an avocado plant grown from seed. Oh, hi, Boana. Oh, <laughs> it's a healthy plant six years old ah you've got staying power you've got the patience of job um it's a healthy plant that's six years old will it ever bear fruit you know what you have had the patience your reward will arrive probably in two years time so an ever grown from a pip that's why we recommend always to rather buy grafted plants because with a grafted plant you increase you, you, you actually you reduce the time that you need to wait for that plant to become an adult to bear fruit um, so they normally take between five and seven years and an avo is exactly the same so within their seventh eighth or ninth year they will start bearing fruit so hang in there you've waited so long just hang in there a little bit longer and it should start giving you fruit just as a quick word with avos, remember they've got a very fibrous root, surface root system. Please do mulch them. Mulch them with leaves. Mulch them with the, um, the lawn clippings that you've taken. Uh, put that around the leaf zone. Okay, what is the leaf zone, the root zone? That is if I'm the trunk of the avo tree and these are my outside leaves from there right up here. That whole area, that all that area all the way around, that is called the feeding zone. So that's where you need to mulch that entire thing and use either of those fertilizers that I spoke about a bit earlier because it works like a charm. Okay, I want to show you some other plants because they're really good. They're beautiful. All right, uh, Mace, you have to come with me. Come and have a look here. Here's some more great container ideas, guys, and I just love it. Now look at this. Yummy, yummy. Okay, what have we got in here? Well, this is a beautiful terracotta bowl. It's nice and low. It's a 50 centimeter bowl. Um, will last forever. Look how funky it looks. In here, I've got a bromeliad. Look at this leaf. I mean, do you get anything more gorgeous than this? It looks like it's been highlighted, you know, with a broad stroke. Beautiful um, bromeliad in here. In the back, I've got a coleus. All right, now notice this. I've left this flower here on purpose because I want to tell you, you never let these things flower you get them in different colors you get them in a red you get them in a yellow um, they have come back into fashion they are fabulous they can grow in the full sun they can grow in semi-shade and they really need very little care but when it starts to flower please nip off the flower you don't want the flower we want the foliage and when you allow this plant to continue flowering all the energy goes into the flowers and the leaves start losing condition, all right? And they start just looking awful. 
what we want is we want this contrast. Look at this. White, gold with the red. Beautiful. I mean, that black jumps out at you. Next to it, I've got another firm favorite. This is called Plectranthus Mona Lavender. Plectranthus Mona Lavender is indigenous. Look at the underside of this leaf. Look at that. Look at that mauve. Isn't it gorgeous? It's spectacular. Mona Lavender doesn't get big. Stays nice and short, okay? It's about the same height as these guys. So they work together. Beautiful contrasts and colors. How do you look after this guy? When it's finished flowering, you give it a light pruning, light pruning, and it'll just bush up again. This con combination, as is here, will live beautifully on a patio, will also live in semi-shade, but not in the full, full sun, okay? Because of this boy over here, because of the bromeliad. Okay, beautiful combo there. Have a look here, Mace, come with me. Look at that, nice nasturtiums. Those are the things I was chomping on. Gorgeous in pots. I want to show you this. Mace, we've got to get into the corner here. Come and have a look here. All right, so this is another type of container. Can you see here? Can you see there? This is like a little, a little dipstick here for your plant. So the water actually lives at the bottom here. Your water lives in this container. And there's a gap here. There's like a well. So you water it through there as you're adding the water. So your little indicator goes up. You see that little red guy in there? So there's a maximum and a minimum, just like when you're checking the oil in your car. All right? And that's where you want to just keep it. The plants then take up the moisture from the sump, okay, and then they grow. When the sump is running low of water, because remember the roots are not sitting in it, it'll go down to minimum. You then just add more water. Nice and easy, and I love this. Beautiful, nice and simple. These will be available, these guys, um, on our website in the next few weeks, so please do look out. They're fabulous, they work, um, and they're good for balconies, urban gardening, you know, if you don't have a lot of space. Um, but this is, <laughs> this is super cool. Okay, you'll never overwater your plants. All right, mates, let's go back. Um, right, um, remember, guys, that we will answer all your questions. So if I don't get to all of them, please, I promise you, I will sit diligently at my computer. I might need to take a Ritalin to keep me in one place, but I will answer all your questions during the course of today. And remember, I've got a big secret for you big secret. The secret is that we have printed some June magazines. Remember we told you earlier that we weren't able to print our June magazine? Well, we pulled rabbits out of hats. We made a plan. We begged and pleaded, and we have printed some June The Gardener and Detainees magazines. If you want to find out where your local stockist is, whether it's a garden centre or your local spa pick and pay, please go and have a look on our website, and you will see where they are available. Um, please go out and buy it. Uh, we need your support, guys. We really, really do. We want to continue publishing beautiful gardening magazines for you for many, many more years to come. Um, that's our job. That's my job. My job is to inspire and, and educate and share. And that's what I get my kick out of. So um, please go and get your June issue. You can also download it. Remember, go to www.thegardener. You can download it. It's really easy. Don't think you can't do it because if I could even do it, you can. You click, you download it, you can read it, chunk, chunk, you can zoom in, you can click through, all sorts of fancy things, but it works, it's quick and it's easy and it's cheap. Okay, you save loads when you're doing that. Guys, I think that's all from my side. Um, I haven't got through all my plants, but um, I'm sure they'll pop up again. Um, listen to the birds. They are going mad because it's a gorgeous day. Um, folks, all I want to say is thank you so, so much um, for watching us here on Facebook Live. I hope you've enjoyed it. Remember, go potty. There are no rules. Anything that you can put in, a, in something that can hold soil works. That is container gardening. Um, get out there. Enjoy it. Um, look after yourselves. Um, and God bless you. Um, most importantly, and uh, happy gardening. Take care. Till next time. Bye, guys. Hi, guys. I'm Tanya Fisser from The Gardener and Detainee Magazines, and have I got some COVID-19 therapeutic relief for you. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to print your favorite gardening magazine, but relax, we've got a plan. The Gardener and Detainee Magazines are now available online. Simply visit thegardener.co.za and follow the easy prompts to have your June edition digitally delivered to your inbox. 
Whether you're seedling and gardening or a gardening guru, get all the latest gardening inspiration, how-tos right at your fingertips. And get even more gardening for less with our Bumper June combined digital issue. And that, folks, is gardening therapy at your fingertips.